Welcome everyone to German Tour Views. Today we have the Bit Ratchet Showdown. Bit ratchets are similar to compact quarter inch drive ratchets, with the drive style being an insert for a quarter inch hex bit instead of a typical quarter inch square drive. They are most useful in confined spaces where it would be a challenge to use a standard driver. For the purposes of this comparison, I decided to get a couple of bit ratchets that consists of a bare metal handle. There are a couple of other brands that offer bit ratchets, but only with comfort grip handles, which I have intentionally omitted for this particular comparison. So let's take a look at the candidates for this showdown. First up we have the Philo 61569 Series 57 Mini Bit Ratchet. This unit is made in Germany and comes with an adapter so you can use the ratchet on quarter inch sockets as well as quarter inch bits. Then we have the Vera 8001A. This unit I actually took from one of my bit check sets. The ratchet itself is made in Taiwan. The retail unit also does come with a quarter inch square to quarter inch adapter, similar to the one included with the Philo unit. Then we have the Hazet 863M bit. This unit appears to be identical to the Hazet 863 quarter inch drive ratchet with the square drive being replaced by a quarter inch hex drive. This unit is made in Germany. Then we have the Viha 38060 mini bit ratchet and click fix set. This unit comes with the click fix quick release holder that is made in Germany, but the ratchet itself is made in Taiwan. Now let's talk a little bit about how I'm going to score each of these units. My original scoring criteria was going to be a lot more heavily based on performance of the units, but as you will see in a bit, after using them for quite a bit, I saw no perceivable performance difference in the units. They all did the job they were designed for quite well, and I didn't see any significant particular advantage from one over the other in terms of performance. The real difference between the units is going to come down to price, unit dimensions, ease of use, serviceability, and personal preference. Some of these I can quantify, while others can be very subjective and may be drastically different from one person to another. Here is a breakdown of each of the categories that I'm scoring the units. We got price, where lower is better. Weight, where lower is also better. And then we have a couple of categories including length, width, and height with bit, where the shorter is better. Then we have the number of teeth, which higher is better. Then we have bit fit, how well does the bit fit in the drive. Bit insertion and removal, how easy it is to insert and remove bits from the drive. Handle design, which handle shape do I prefer. Design workmanship quality, just some general observations about the overall design and build quality of the unit. And finally, serviceability, can it be easily serviced in the future. So now let's get right into the scoring for each of the units. Using the list price of each unit, I normalized them to give them a score between 1 and 10, with 10 being the lowest price unit. The lowest price unit was surprisingly not one of the Taiwan made units, but instead the Philo, coming in at just about $30 list price. The Viha unit was close behind at around $34, followed by the Vera at $46 and the Hazet at around $106. The Hazet is obviously an outlier here, with the German made units both the cheapest and most expensive in this group. Again, these are list prices, so you're probably able to find these significant discounts depending on the distributor. Now for weight scoring, I'm going to score this category on the assumption that a lower weight tool is desirable for this type of tool. That may or may not be true depending on your personal preferences. These are normalized such that the lightest unit scores a 10. The very unit was the lightest at 56 grams, and the heaviest unit was the Philo at 97. In between were the Hazet and Viha units at 68 and 72 grams respectively. Now for some dimensional scoring. Under the assumption that a smaller, more compact tool is desired, each of these are scored with the smallest value being better. First up is overall length. These were all relatively close, with all units being under 100 millimeters. The longest was the Philo at 98 millimeters, while the shortest was the Vera at 87. Next, I measured the maximum width of the head of each of the tools. Both the Vera and Viha unit came in at 17.5 millimeters for the narrowest width. Next was the Philo at 19, and the Hazet came in at 22 millimeters, making it the widest of the group. Next up is the total height of the unit, with a standard quarter inch 25 millimeter bit installed. This will be useful to act in place of an offset screwdriver. The shortest lengths were the Vera and the Hauset units, which came in at 27.5 millimeters. Philo and Viha units came in at 30.0 millimeters. The next category is the physical number of teeth that the ratchet has. It is assumed that a higher number of teeth is desired to minimize the return angle of the ratcheting function. There's always a trade-off since it is generally understood that fewer teeth results in a stronger mechanism. Hauset unit strangely has a very low tooth count on this ratchet at only 20 resulting in an 18 degree return angle. Philo and Vera units both have 60 teeth for a 6 degree return angle. The one with the highest tooth count was the Viha, with 72 teeth for a 5 degree return angle. One property I think it is important is how well does the bit fit in each of these ratchets. You want a bit that doesn't have a lot of wobble or give to it to minimize the chance of a cam out while you're using it. The unit I found had the best fit out of the four was the Hazet, and therefore gave it a 10 in this category. The next best was the Philo, which was quite good, but not as tight as a fit as the Hazet, and therefore gave it a 9. The other two units had quite a bit of play to them, with the Vera being the worst of the four. A lot of this extra play was actually in the hex insert, not necessarily with the actual drive. Due to this, I gave the Viha a 7 and the Vera a 6. 
One of the key features of a good bit ratchet is the ease in which insertion and removal of the bits takes place. You ideally want something that is both easy to change and secure at the same time. We have a couple of different design approaches on how to secure the bits in place. The Filo and Vihal units use a magnet, while the Hazet and Vera units use a spring to clamp the bit with friction. My personal design preference is the ones with a magnet because it makes it easier to insert and only requires marginal force to remove the bit. The two ratchets that use this design also have the downside that a bit more of the bit sticks out to make room for the magnet to the tune of about 2.5 millimeters. The positive of this is that you get a little bit more material to grab onto when pulling the bit out. Not only are the spring-loaded designs harder to insert the bits, it also takes a significant amount of force to remove them, which in greasy conditions could become an issue. The hole on the top of the barrel is large enough to fit the tip of your finger to get the bit started out, but the same trick cannot be performed on the Hazet. You could always use a small punch if needed to push the bits out of these units. Since the Filo and Viha basically have the same magnet design, I gave them both a 10 in this category. The Vera I gave an 8 because of personal preference against the spring clip design, and the Hazet I gave a 7 because it can be extremely difficult to remove this in certain conditions without the aid of another tool to knock it out. On to handle design. There were definitely a lot of variations in the handle shape and feel throughout these pieces. The Filo and Hazet units have a 15 degree offset that is used to provide relief when there is not much vertical clearance around the fastener. I can see an argument for this being a hindrance, but I feel like it would come in handy in more situations where it would be an obstruction. Other than that, the only real comment I had about the handle design was the switch on the V-Hot unit seemed to be in the way when you held the ratchet in a certain way. I actually liked the handle unit on the Filo at the best of the four and gave it a 10. Hazard and Vera units, nothing wrong with them, I gave them a 9. And the V-Hot I gave a 7 because of the, the switch issue. To score design, workmanship, and quality category, I'll go ahead and open up each one of these to examine the construction and production quality of all the internal components. First up with the Filo, the design here using a retaining ring is quite old school. You don't see many newer ratchets use this approach. It definitely makes lubricating the ratchet the easiest out of the four, and I really like the simplicity of the unit. Just like all of the designs in this showdown, this unit uses a single pole design and has nine teeth engagement with the drive. One thing I don't particularly like is that they decided to laser etch the Filo name on this unit instead of stamping it somewhere on the tool. Something that this unit comes with a warranty. I have concerns that the markings will wear off at some point, making the tool unbranded. I really didn't see anything else here except for the fact that it wasn't as well lubricated as I thought it should be out of the box, so I gave the Filo a 9. The very unit was the most difficult of the four to take apart. They were actually using a clip that has dual functionality in holding together the ratchet as well as holding the bit in the holder. With the clip having parallel edges, it mates up with some slots placed on the drive that allows it to make contacts with the inserted bit. Pretty ingenious in terms of production and cost cutting approach, but I'm not a big fan of this design because it inherently allows for a lot of movement in the drive since there's no active lateral force holding it in place. Once I got it apart, you can see that the materials used for this drive were extremely thin and I had my concerns about the longevity of the unit. Just from a casual observation, I would surmise that this would be the weakest ratchet out of the four. I do like the switching mechanism and saw no real defects in the handle or finishing. I gave the Vera a seven in this category. The Hazet unit has a more traditional construction that is similar to their normal ratchets. It uses two Torx screws to hold a plate that provides access to the mechanism. And let me tell you, the clearance on this plate must have been less than a thousandth of an inch because I had a heck of a time getting it to punch out. As mentioned before, the Hazet unit uses a coarse tooth ratcheting mechanism that uses the traditional ball bearing and spring mechanism. It appears to me that the only real difference between the bit ratchet and their normal quarter inch drive ratchets is the actual drive. I would bet that they are interchangeable and you can convert between the two by buying the rebuild kits. From the looks of it, the Hazet unit really didn't skimp out on anything when they designed and built this. As part of the reason for the higher cost of this particular tool, it is designed to last a lifetime, can be rebuilt at some point in the future with a rebuild kit. Really, there is nothing more to say about this design and the construction of the Hazet unit. Since I could find nothing wrong, I give it a 10. The Viha unit kind of has an odd construction with a single screw used to access the ratchet mechanism. The plate has a tab on one side to hold it in place on the other end. I think part of the bit wobble is attributed to this design. Since this unit has the highest ratchet tooth count, it needed to add more teeth in the paw in order to maintain strength for a smaller dedendrum in the ratchet gear. I like the expanded size of the compartment where you can see and access all the mechanisms and components. As mentioned before, I'm not really a big fan of the switch design as it's way too bulky for this size ratchet. found myself hitting it a couple of times when you hold it in a certain way. Mainly for that reason, I gave the Viha an 8. In terms of being serviced, it looks like all of these ratchets could potentially be serviced in the future. However, looking closely at the manufacturer catalogs, Hazet is the only one that lists a rebuild kit for their bit ratchet. As far as I'm concerned, if the manufacturer doesn't provide spare parts for an item, then it is considered unserviceable, in my opinion. My thought is that since most of these bit ratchets are relatively low in cost, the rebuild kits would probably be close to the price of the ratchet itself and therefore isn't economical to stock given how infrequent someone would need one. For the aforementioned reasons, I gave the Hazet a 10 and I gave a 5 to the three remaining units. 
really to try to do a good job of testing these ratchets. But as I mentioned before, I wasn't really noticing any real performance difference in them. I tightened a couple of screws down to two newton meters with the slipper style's torque wrench. It actually contains a double ratchet, make, making it impossible to over tighten a fastener. So you know that they are all at exactly the same torque. Really, all four of the units did this job. The difference really comes into personal preference as to the handle style, and in some cases the return angle provided by the difference in tooth count on the ratchets. There are instances where the coarse teeth of the housette unit would, just wouldn't cut it. So it's all relative to your situation. Same case when I tried this on a couple of number two Phillip bits. In this case, I tightened the screw until the vise moved, and I really didn't notice any one ratchet making this job easier. All of these units will get the job done. If we total the scores using the previously mentioned criteria, we can now rank the candidates using two significant digits. They actually all scored relatively close, but there is one clear winner. In first place was the Philo unit with a score of 8.76. The Philo unit being the lowest price of the four, scored high in ease of bit insertion and removal, as well as having my favorite handle design of the four. However, the unit was the heaviest and largest of the four in this comparison. In second place with a score of 8.24 was the VHA unit. The pros of the VHA unit are that it is relatively low in price, and has the highest number of ratchet teeth out of the lot. The cons were I really didn't favor the switch design, and the bits had some play to them in the drive. In third place with a score of 8.18 was the Hazet unit, just behind the Viha. Even though the Hazet is an order of magnitude more expensive than the other units, it is really a tool that you should only need to buy once in a lifetime, reflected by the build quality and precision parts. The cons along with the price were the very low number of teeth count in the ratchet, which was unexpected for a tool of this size. The bits were also a bit difficult to insert and remove. Finally, in fourth place with a score of 7.79 was the very unit. The pros of the very unit were that it was the most compact and lightest weight out of the units. The things I didn't like about it were the clip design and the tolerance for the hex bits was a bit on the loose side. Like I said before, all of these ratchets will get the job done, and the differences between them are really not as drastic as I anticipated when I originally started the showdown. Hopefully you enjoyed that showdown of some bit ratchets. Check out the link in the description of the four of you. There are also some affiliate links in the description if you're to pick any of these units up. Have a good week and I'll catch you guys next time.